Okay, so question number four. We need to write multiple Lewis structures. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, for each of these molecules and each of these ions, also showing the resonance forms. So for A, we have ammonium hydroxide. So first, let's calculate the total number of valence electrons for this molecule. Nitrogen has five. Hydrogen has one. And we have three hydrogen atoms, so we multiply this by three. And oxygen has six, giving us a total of 14 valence electrons. Okay, so now let's uh, draw out a Lewis structure. So our nitrogen can be bonded with the two hydrogens, and the oxygen can be bonded with the second hydrogen. So this is the skeletal structure of our compound, and if we were to count out all the electrons we have so far, where each bond contains two bonding electrons, we only have eight out of the 14. So we need to draw out six more. So we can draw two lone pairs on oxygen and just another lone pair on our nitrogen to complete their octets. So now we have uh, all our 14 electrons and the correct Lewis structure for ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so now let's look at our second compound, C2H3. Cl, and let's calculate the total number of valence electrons. So carbon has four, multiplied by two. Hydrogen has one, multiplied by three. And chlorine just has the seven. So adding these up, we get a total of 18 valence electrons. So now let's draw out its skeletal structure with carbon that can be attached with the three hydrogens and then another carbon is attached to the chlorine. So now let's draw out the lone pairs on our chlorine and you can see that this is not a likely structure because our carbon doesn't have a full octet yet. So and we also have only 16 electrons in this structure as well. So let's see what happens if we were to take one of the hydrogens from our first carbon and place it on our second carbon. You can see that both of them don't have a full octet yet until we form a double bond between the two. So now let's count out the electrons. And we have our 18 electrons and everything has a full octet with the exception of hydrogen, which has a duet, but that's okay and we have the correct Lewis structure. Okay, so for compound number, or compound letter C, we have carbon tetrachloride. So carbon has four valence electrons. Fluorine has seven times four. And we have a total of 32 electrons.
Oh wait, I skipped one. Well, let's do this one first. So this is D. And we have 32 electrons. We will just have carbon. And we'll see what happens if we just have the four single bonds to chlorine and fill out all of the lone pairs. So now we have our full 32 electrons already drawn in the structure. So we know we have the correct Lewis structure. Let me just try to separate all of these and they'll fit part C here. Which was H O C L. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Oxygen has six and chlorine has seven giving us a total of 14 valence electrons. So I think the simplest structure is just our oxygen in the middle, bonded with both hydrogen and chlorine. And if we counted out the electrons we've drawn so far in this structure, we only have 10 out of the 14. So the remaining two electrons will just go on our oxygen. Okay, so I know everything's out of order, but I think I can try to just fit E in this little section right here. Just so that we can fit all the parts in part one. Okay, so this is E. We have C2, Br2. Calculating the total number of valence electrons. Carbon has 4 times 2. And bromine has 7 times 2. Giving us 22 valence electrons. So now, let's draw our two carbons bonded together, and each of them bonded to a bromine. Okay, so we now have this structure, and notice that our carbons don't have a full octet yet. Even if we drew a double bond, they still don't have a full octet. So now let's draw a triple bond. So they have a full octet now, and if we count out all the electrons, we have our 22 valence electrons accounted for. Okay, so these are the five Lewis structures for part A of question four. And then we can draw the remaining on this page. So these are all ions now. And now we start off with the nitrite ion, NO2 minus. To make room for myself this time. So nitrogen has five valence electrons and oxygen has six, and we have two oxygens, so we multiply that by two. And we also need to add an additional electron since this ion has an overall negative charge. So this gives us a total of 18 valence electrons. So now, if we drew out the skeletal structure, we have nitrogen single bonded to both of our oxygens. And if we were to fill in all of the lone pairs, 
Then we have 16 out of the 18. Uh, but notice that our nitrogen doesn't have a full octet yet. So one of these oxygens needs to be double bonded. So now we have our 18 electrons, and we can show that this single bonded oxygen has a negative charge, and we can include its resonance structure just down here, where the first oxygen can have the negative charge, and the second oxygen will be double bonded. Okay, so these are the two Lewis structures, or resonance structures, that can be formed for part A. Now for part B, we have carbon dioxide. So carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen has six, and we have two of them giving us a total of 16 valence electrons. So now let's draw carbon as our central atom and two single bonds to the oxygen. So notice that carbon doesn't have a full octet yet, so we can just make both of these double bonds and then fill in all of the lone pairs. So now we have our 18 electrons, all our 16 electrons all accounted for, and the correct Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. And no more resonance structures can be formed since we, all, we have two double bonds on just both of the oxygens. So now we have SO3. So sulfur has six valence electrons, oxygen also has six, and we have three oxygen atoms, so we multiply that by three to give us a total of 24 valence electrons. So now if we draw sulfur as our central atom and showed all of the bonds to the oxygens, and sulfur doesn't have a full octet yet. Uh, but actually, sulfur is one of those elements that are able to not follow the octet rule and have more than eight electrons in its valence shell. So we can actually make all of these oxygens double bonded and then draw in all of the lone pairs that remain, like so. So this gives us our 24 electrons and even if we calculated the formal charge of sulfur, we'll still get zero. So let's show how to do that. So formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the number of non-bonding electrons minus the number of bonding electrons divided by two. So for sulfur, there are six valence electrons, zero non-bonding electrons, and we have six bonds, so we have 12 bonding electrons in total divided by two. You can see that it is still neutral. So this is the correct Lewis structure for SO3. And we don't have any more resonance structures because again, all of the oxygens just have a double bond. And now let's do our last ion, which is CO3 2 minus the carbonate ion. Carbon has four, uh, do it in the same format, four valence electrons. Oxygen has six. And we have three oxygen atoms, so we multiply that by three. 
and the overall 2 minus charge of the ion tells us we need to add an additional 2 electrons to the structure, giving us a total of 24 valence electrons. Okay, so now let's draw carbon as our central atom. And if we were to draw the three bonds to our oxygen groups, uh, then you'll notice that carbon doesn't have a full octet, so we'll make one of them double bonded. And then just fill in all of the lone pairs. So if we count out all the electrons in this structure, uh, we have 16, 19, 20, 22, 23. We have our 24 already accounted for. And these single bonded oxygens will carry negative charges. So that's where our 2 minus charge came from for this ion. So now we can actually draw resonance structures for this compound. Just moving around the double bond. We could have this resonance structure. And this resonance structure. Like so. Okay, so these are our four molecules for part B. Okay, so let's go back to part A to see what the junior tutor said. It's so much more disorganized compared to my second page. But anyways, this was ammonium hydroxide, so that's correct. And then the double bond with the chlorine and the hydrogen. Yep, so that's correct as well. C was like over here for some reason. Oh, they stopped at C. Well, the first three are correct. And they started off doing the fourth one. Okay, so the three solutions given are correct. The remaining structures are missing.